Hello, my friends. It's a couple of minutes before two. I thought I'd log on. Get that uh, straight. The rest will drive me crazy. How are you today? Today was a surprise class to us all. I wasn't sure if I was going to be out on the town painting live somewhere or back in the studio. You can tell I'm back in the studio. It's good to see you. We're going to do something different today. Uh, so hello to all my friends logging in. Hey, JD. JD is here to help with the comments. Um, hey, remember, if the robots bump us off of Facebook for some reason, don't worry. Stay where you are. I'm going to start another live session and keep going. Today, we're going to do something a little different. Um, we have been using acrylic paints for all of our other pep club projects, but today, we're gonna use, uh, use ink. In fact, we're gonna use something called Derwent. Derwent is the brand. Ink Tense Block. Ink Tense Block. So um, it's a little different. It's, it's a lot like watercolor, except when it's dry, it's permanent. When it's dry, it's permanent, it's not gonna move. And that's one of the reasons I love it so much. So, um, just wanted to delay a little so we can get over to Hidden Landmarks TV. If you don't know about Hidden Landmarks TV, oh my gosh, you've got to log in, go over, start following, so much great stuff. We just had our first of the season uh, Victory Garden with Melissa Balco. Oh my gosh, so much great stuff. Um, yeah, I hope you're having a good week. Hey Donna, nice to see you. Um, I hope you're having a really good week. The project I'm going to work on here with you today is one that I designed for my elementary school kids. Uh, so two days a week, I am teaching in a private school pre-K through sixth art class. And you know, Tuesday was a tough day. <laughs> I think it was the first warmish day and the kids were, you know, getting antsy. And can you believe it? Not everybody loves art class. Can you believe it? I can't believe it. Um, but yeah, there's some kids who are like, meh. And worse than being meh, some of the kids are just not happy to be with me. But that's okay. We get through. I want these kids to feel successful uh, with their projects. And uh, I'll show you today one of the projects that I devised for the kiddos. We used watercolor at school. But today, again, we're going to be using these Derwent Ink Tense Blocks. But if you have crayons on you, if you want to use acrylics, um, if you have watercolor, this will work just as well with watercolor. So the thing, other things that I have with me, paint brushes, of course, and I have some of these water brushes that I'm going to talk you through. There are different brands on the market. Some of them ain't great. Some of them are pretty good. So I want to talk to you about that and I'll be using um, some Sharpie stuff. And if you have a white crayon close to you, I know that sounds bizarre. It's like filming a scavenger hunt for your homes. But if you have a white crayon, that is helpful. Not 100% necessary, but I'll show you. I'm going to be doing basically a wax resist. In watercolor, we use something called a fluid mask. Um, not this kind of mask, uh, a fluid mask, which is basically just rubber that you paint onto your surface. Um, but I'm going to be using a crayon today. So if you have a crayon, just get whatever color. White is nice. Uh, I'm going to be using my Canson mixed media. So it's not even watercolor paper. It's mixed media paper and it holds up just fine to, um, to these, this product. In fact, when we did our cupcakes, is that last week we did cupcakes? So this is, uh, using these Derwent's. Um, and you can see the paper, there's a little wrinkling right around here, but as I've said before, you can, you're sweet too, JD. Um, you can iron this with a dry iron, um, F to the Y I. So let's see, I'm just gonna flip my camera around. You know, you've been here before. I'm gonna flip my camera. I'm getting my paper set up gonna make it so that you can see my work surface and we are gonna do some underwater uh, really fun ink painting um, all right you ready I'm gonna flip you I'm gonna flip you 
Let's see, where's the button? All right, here we go. Here is my surface. If I can't see, come on, focus up, focus up, thank you. If I can't see your comments right now, um, JD will help me out and I will be going through the comments a little later. And I have moved my rigging here, so I need to come on back. All right, there we are. Can everybody see what I'm doing? Um, getting my lights fixed up. So, like I said, I wasn't sure if I was going to be on location somewhere else today or if I was going to be here with you in the studio. Um, I took the morning to drive down to Ithaca. I've been looking for a couch for a while. We have a, a lovely little vintage love seat, but I have a dog that thinks she's a lap dog, and you know what? She's not a lap dog, and that love seat is just getting a little tight. So I went to Ithaca today looking for a vintage couch. Have not found the vintage couch of my dreams, but I know I will. All right, so I've got my white paper. I've got my ink tents. So I've got two kits here. This one is 36 of these blocks. This one was originally 12. There, This isn't a super cheap art supply. So you might want to try a couple of these before you get the bigger kit. And there's even a kit larger than this one. There are ink tents pencils as well that work just like watercolor pencils, but I don't love them. Uh, they're a little bit delicate for me. I know other people like them a lot. So there's also the pencils that you can buy and you can sharpen them. But I like these ink blocks. Um, you can color right with these, or I'm sorry, draw right with these. Um, I use a brush with these, and this kit has these little water wells right in here. And can you see how all of my blocks are uh, broken in half? If you've ever used pastels, it, these feel like pastels. They're not as chalky, but I've broken these in half. So instead of me having just the 12 colors, I actually have 24 colors because what I've done is I've taken my favorite colors from the 36 kit and I've broken them in half and put them in my little travel kit. And I, when I mean travel kit, I really mean travel kit. I have taken this all over the world with me. Um, we, I've painted with this in Italy, in Scotland, in Northern Ireland. Um, it's really great stuff. Uh, if you like to do what's called urban sketching or, or plein air, I do what I call jazzy plein air. This, these ink blocks are fantastic and you can use them what, with these water brushes. So there's a, a tube back here that you fill with water and then you push a little and then let's see if this is coming up on screen. You push a little and the water comes out um, of the bristles. This brand from Arteza, uh, Arteza is sort of a, you know, uh, what do I want to say? Like a, a cheapo depot art supply company, but actually these Arteza water brushes are fantastic. I have them in every size they make. There are these water brushes on the market. I don't know what brand they are. Let's see. I don't know and you unscrew this and you fill it with water, but these leak. I do not love these. I keep them here. I think more as a warning for my students. These were less expensive, I think, than these, but these are junk. Just don't even waste your time. These from Arteza are great, hashtag not sponsored. Um, so you're like, yeah, so what? Let's get to painting. Oh, okay, my friends, I am going to move my kit over here, uh, I have my freshy fresh clean water because I can use the inks with either, I can use the inks either with, you know, a normal paintbrush or these water brushes. So I'll probably just be going back and forth. We are going to be creating a, a jellyfish today. I am gonna take a um, a marker, of course. Um, which one do I want to use? I'm going to use my favorite thin Sharpie. Look, I got these in my Christmas stocking. I'm just opening, opening them up. Thank you, Santa. Um, these are harder to find. They're Sharpies. Uh, the Sharpie pen 
um, won't bleed through paper, but more importantly, won't bleed when I get it wet, which is important. All right, open sesame, open sesame. This is why I don't have nice nails, people, because I'm always opening stuff and doing stuff. Oh, all right, there we go. So I'm gonna start here. I'm not gonna use a pencil today because the pencil will get smeary. Um, so I'm gonna use this thin Sharpie. I hope you can see it on camera. So a jellyfish starts with, oh, always check that the back of the paper doesn't have any important artwork on it because sometimes I go in both directions here. Okay, so a jellyfish starts with like a, uh, a rainbow shape, like an arc. You can see that. And then it's got a gentle ruffle here. And then I uh, double that ruffle. Bada bing. And you'll see as I paint this, I'm gonna paint this area darker so it kind of looks like you're looking up into the jellyfish. And then of course it's got all of these beautiful wispy uh, elegant tendrils. You can just go to town. You don't need to draw these in. You don't need to use a marker. I'm just doing this so you can see it on screen. If I was doing this my own private situation, I wouldn't use this marker necessarily. I just want to make sure that you can see what I am aiming at. Okay, now I'm going to take my white crayon. I'm going to take my white crayon and I'm going to use this as basically a wax resist. So I'm going to want some water bubbles. So I am just going to town with this crayon putting in some bubbles. Sometimes they're in pairs. Sometimes they're all by them lonesome. Um, and I'm gonna go over the jellyfish some too. Uh, I'm not gonna go in here because I want that to be dark. I'm gonna add some lines. I know you can't see this on screen right now. In fact, I can't see it either standing right here with my lights and the white crayon. But what's gonna happen is when I go over why is there red in my white crayon? Oh, the mysteries, the mysteries of the world. Um, uh, when I go over this with the ink, it will not be able to absorb into the paper and it will act as a resist, a wax resist. All right, you excited? I wanna get some paint going. So here I have, I'm gonna take uh, this large Arteza brush. Um, you can still dip this into water, and I think I'm gonna start with the jellyfish today. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm just using my imagination. I'm not using a reference photo here, but I am just gonna get to town painting. Can you see, is that picking up? It'll pick up better uh, when we go to a darker color. But anywhere I've put the white crayon as a resist, uh, the ink is not gonna flow. So again, this is just like watercolor but it's actually ink. And when it's dry, it will not move anywhere. It's not gonna go anywhere. With watercolor, other than it, you know, it, watercolor stains your paper, but you can really keep lifting your watercolor. So once your watercolor is dry, you can add more water and get a different effect. With the ink, once it's dry, it's there, it's done. And I like that, I like that. I like sort of um, having to live with the decisions I've made. That's why I use a lot of Sharpie marker. Um, and that's why I love this ink. So this bottom area, I want that to be darker. So I'm gonna go, let's start with orange. I can always layer on top. Ooh, can you see how beautiful that is? Ah. Uh, I love this color. I love this color. What a perfect thing to paint with these watery inks. Um, oh, a jellyfish. You see how it's seeping in right here? See how the water is making the ink travel? I love it. I love it. If I didn't want that to happen, I could have waited and let this area dry. Could have let this area dry, but nope. I am going for it. Thank you all for being here. I love doing Pep Club. I hope you're having a good time. Um, again, thank you to everyone who's come over to Pep Club from Hidden Landmarks TV. 
Um, what a fun group of people. I've really been enjoying chatting with all of you and sending love and I've been getting the nicest messages and I, I just appreciate it with my whole heart. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry down a little and I'm gonna go on to the water. And I like it when the water looks like maybe this, some sun is actually coming up from the top. So I'm gonna aim towards making this area lighter and then come darker. And I'm not too concerned about the tendrils right now. I'll see where that's gonna go. So, uh, let's see. So I'm gonna start off with this tealy blue. And I'm not sure if you're picking up on screen. Let's get, uh, I'm not sure if it's picking up on screen, but wherever I drew in those white bubbles, uh, with the white crayon, the ink isn't absorbing. Now I'm adding a little bit darker blue. The ink isn't absorbing wherever I use that white crayon as a resist. So this is a fast way to paint. I do this, like I said, I have used this kit all over the world. I go out and I uh, paint in cityscapes mostly. I like to paint cityscapes. Um, and I use this kit and it's easy to pack up. I, I decide on what size bag I want to carry and that helps to get me to decide what art supplies I'm going to pack for the day. So if uh, I have a rolling cart, so if I'm somewhere like uh, if I'm in Manhattan and I know that I can get back and forth to the hotel or whatever, I'll keep a rolling cart with me and roll my art supplies around the city. And it's a kit like this that I typically bring with me. There was one time I was out painting in Bryant Park, which is not too far from 42nd Street in Manhattan. Um, so it's a busy area. You can see the Chrysler Building. You can see the Empire State Building. The Bank of China is right there. I was out painting plein air in Bryant Park and I had our first dog, Ruka Dog. She was a big yellow shepherd, a big adopted yellow shepherd. Um, and I was out in the park painting and you know, every once in a while I'll actually sell something while I'm on the street, which is so fun and just makes me happy. Um, but this day I, w I wasn't selling anything. I mean, I wasn't really trying to sell anything, but I was just there painting and um, people always want to talk uh, to me about either the dog or what I'm working on. And, and I love that. I feel like that's part of the process. Well, I was there one day with Ruka Dog. I was in Bryant Park. And now I'm just dipping a bit into the green to get up here. Um, I was in the park with Ruka Dog and a gentleman walked up to me and started talking to me about Ruka. She was such a pretty puppy. And uh, it turns out he was a, a TV producer and they were uh, taping a segment for something. And uh, the dog that they had hired um, called out sick. <laughs> and uh, he's like, hey, can we hire your dog for the day? And, you know, I made sure, like, if it was going to be for, you know, for, like, chicken nuggets or something, I would have said no. But I, I liked what they were talking about. They were talking about... Um, wellness and health and uh they just needed their main character to be walking a dog at some point um so i said yeah and ruka dog was in this little spot and she made more money that day than i did so we went right over to the pet store and she got some treats with the money she had made she was such a good dog my current dog dulcie dog is amazing as well but they're just such a different personality ruka dog was a little bit of a nervous dog, um, but she did great on that TV spot. Okay, so I've got a paper towel here. It's my favorite, my Viva paper towel, and I'm just blotting and pulling up. And what that does is it adds some extra texture. I don't know that it'll come up on screen too well, but it in front of me, I can see there's just a little bit of texture from the paper towel. And the blotting also allows me to paint other areas more quickly. So, all right, I'm gonna go to a thinner brush, another one of these water brushes, 
and let's see if you can it I press and a little bit of water comes out it's cool so oh here's a tip so if you're going uh if you're tra traveling with these if you're on an airplane eventually we'll all be flying all over the place again don't worry if you're on an airplane with these keep the uh keep the barrels without any wa water and then go through customs or you know the check point or whatever it is you want and then um, go to the bathroom and fill this up. And then you could be painting all day long. I mean, I, what, I don't like to just sit around. I like to read books and I like to make art when I've you know, got some time on my hands. Uh, so th these are just fantastic. So I've got a thinner brush here and I've just picked up a bunch of really concentrated ink here. And because these are permanent once they're dry, you have to make a decision and kind of move quickly with that decision. If I were to let that just dry and then decide, oh, you know what, that's a little too dark for me, um, it would be too late. I have to deal with it right when it's wet. So I'm just adding a little bit more darkness under here so that it's almost like our jellyfish is casting a bit of a shadow. So again, you can dip these brushes into water or you can squeeze and get a little bit of water to come out. Underwater friends. And yes, I use my fingers just like in all the other painting. So I, again, I really love these Derwent. And if you're just joining us, this is what I'm using, Derwent Intense Blocks. Um, they're made in the UK. You can't find them everywhere. And it's one of these things sometimes that's like behind a lock and key. Uh, I guess they, people swipe them because they're so yummy and fun to use. All right, I'm gonna add some more darkness to some of these bubbles here. This is a quick, quick painting today. We won't be here long at all. Are we loving the weather or what, people? That's one of the reasons I wasn't sure where I was going to be today, if I was still going to be in Ithaca hanging out or if I was going to be back here in the studio. It was a, I jumped out of the car, took off my wig, because I thought it was a good day for a wig, and uh, came to hang out with y'all. All right, so now I want these tendrils to have something. I think, you know what, I think I'm going to go to one of my acrylic brushes. Just to show you, you can use a, just a regular paintbrush. So I've dipped my paintbrush in water and now I'm picking up this purple and I'm just gonna drop it in here and I'm gonna let it flow and do its thing. It's underwater, right? So let it look like it's underwater. It doesn't need to be perfectly in the lines you drew. Give it some more motion. The motion of the ocean, uh, quite literally. Let's see, how are you seeing? And what I, I love about these is I can just keep layering to intensify how deep these are, these colors. I hope you're having a super great day. I really thank you for being here. Um, it has been so fun every week to come up with a project for all of us. And thank you for sending me. I've been getting private messages with people's projects. That makes me so happy. And even if you're just here, just hanging out, watching me flick paint around, that's awesome too. Let's, uh, let's all band together and just do awesome stuff on the internet together, right? Until we can all hang out in the same room again. Let's make the best of it. Let's see. Ooh, I love when that moves like that. And again, if you've used watercolor in the past, you'll feel pretty at home with this. It's really, it's just, like I said, it. the difference is once it's dry, it's not going to lift. Like this yellow is basically dry and, uh, and yeah, I can, you can feel it's not as cold as the other paper. And once it's dry, it's there. That's it, it's yellow. You can go over it with other colors, but you're not going to, you are not going to, to be able to lift it. What is going on? 
I put my cap on too tight. Okay, there we go. I want to add another layer in here. That's right, all the colors. Why not? Use your imagination. You can see, thank you all for hanging out. And these are also fun. You can flick these. So if I get a lot of water on my brush though, just got a lot of water on my brush, I'm picking up a lot of red. And if I hit my, whoo, that's fun. Ah, that's so fun. Uh, let's see. Let do it with some yellow. Put these intense dots here. And I'll pick up some of the blue and come down here. Yes, I like it, I like it. Let's see. I think I'm gonna go a little darker down here. Like I said, I like when it looks like the water you can is filtering some light. And my paper is getting a little wrinkly right now, but like I said, it's gonna dry down basically flat. And if it's not as flat as I like it, I can uh, iron it with a dry iron. Y'all can see, yeah. All right. Ooh, it's purdy. It's purdy. All right. I want to intensify the shading down on this side. So I'm going to make it a little bit brighter or a little bit darker down here. It's hard to say darker with yellow. It's, you know, all color is relevant to the color around it. You know, it's a little bit of a mind blowing thing, but you could think, you know, like dark gray might be the lightest thing in your setting if everything else is black, right? Um, or pale yellow might be the darkest if everything else in your scene is white, right? So uh, color color intensity is all dependent upon uh, what's around it. What do we think? All right. Ooh, I am loving it. I'm loving it. Okay, so we started with, um, I started off with a Sharpie today, but you don't need to do that. In fact, I wouldn't suggest necessarily that you do that. I kind of like that look. I like when things um, look a little bit cartoony. Uh, I think I'm done. I'm going to let this just sit. My, my work surface is tilted just a little bit, but um, so it's, it's running downhill a little. But otherwise, uh, I think I'm just going to let it dry down and call it a day. After it's dry, if I decide I want to add some more intensity, I might. Well, let me do one more thing. I said I was going to stop, but let me blot a little. Blot. And then I just want to add a little. Ooh, yeah, I just want to add a little bit more there. Oh, and here's something fun I usually have with me in my, my backpack, my kit. I have this little fan. It looks like a little bunny and you do this and uh it can dry off your watercolor and it's just cute and funny got this at a little bodega isn't she cute okay i'm gonna flip my camera one more time so that we can say goodbye to one another for today be sure to check out hidden landmarks tv for all the fun stuff going on hey laura it's good to see you uh let's see i'm back I missed you. So have a super great day. This was a quick one. We're, we're less than a half an hour. How about that? Um, I said last week we were going to do a two-parter. Apparently that's not this week, but I do have an idea for a two-part um, acrylic painting of some mushrooms. Do you want a preview? You want a preview? Let's see. Hold on. This is another project I'm working on for my kiddos, uh, for my older kids at the elementary school, but I thought it'd be fun for us too. It's not quite done yet, but this is going to be at least two weeks for us to work on it. Um, and I might even be able to get a PDF to you so you can like trace if you want. Um, so this is a project in the works and it's going to be more than one week. And uh, we talked about the blue room. I'm looking at it right now. It's amazing. I'm going to do a review or a, 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 a unboxing of the blue room at some point. It's really amazing. I'm loving it. 
Thank you all so much for being here. JD, thanks for helping out. Laura, it's good to see you and everyone else who's watching. My heart goes out to your heart, sending you good love, sending you big, healthy, happy vibes. Have a good day. Bye.